Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. I do videos all about adventure motorcycling, from the trips that I've taken and the bikes that I've ridden, the tips and tutorials, DIY type of stuff, anything to do with adventure motorcycling, you're gonna find it on this channel. If that sounds like the sort of thing you're interested in, please feel free to subscribe, hit that bell so you can get any sort of notifications, any updates that we do from here on in the future. Today we're gonna to be talking about Ewan and Charlie's long way up trip from the southern tip of South America to Los Angeles and some of the new things that we're just finding out with the latest update. Stay tuned. All right, so if you don't know, Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman have been doing trips for uh, adventure motorcycling for a while now. If you need an update on what they did just this most recent one, I'll put a link here to our earlier videos. Now our newest update deals with an article written by Sabrina Giacomini uh, in the Ride Apart series. It's included along with a video that just recently got dropped on the Jimmy Fallon site where he was talking to Ewan McGregor a little bit about the trip. Now my understanding is that the video itself was shot just a few days after they returned back in December, but only recently dropped on Jimmy Fallon's site. So all this information that's now coming out is just kind of brand new to all of us, though it might be a couple of months old uh, in, in terms of the trip itself. One of the things they talked about, which I think was most interesting, was the fact that they're on electric bikes. They're on the Harley Davidson live wires, and Ewan talked a little bit about the difficulties that they had keeping those charges or even getting charges as they were going through South America, Central America. Jimmy Fallon asked the question that we all asked when we heard about this trip. How did you get a charge in South America? Ewan mentioned that obviously there are not a whole lot of charging stations in Patagonia, so what they were doing is actually stopping at people's houses to plug in. Now, if you read the Harley Davidson website about the live wire, it takes a full night on a standard outlet to get that bike charged up. So they're not doing these charges in the middle of the day, they're not doing these charges while they go out and grab some lunch, something along those lines. And my guess is also, when you're going through South America and Central America, maybe your power isn't as reliable as it may be in our standard outlets up here in the States. So I don't understand at all how they think that they're getting these recharges done just on regular outlets from, from folks in Patagonia or Bolivia or Argentina or Honduras for that matter. I, I just don't see how that happened. He also mentioned how sometimes they would ride in the morning, stop for lunch, and they'd plug in at a cafe, a restaurant, or a hotel that was nearby, which again, based on the charging time, something like, I wanna say it's 13 kilometers or 13 miles that they were getting per hour of charge, I just don't see how that's happening on these bikes. Uh, I think the thing that's probably most interesting about this interview that he did with Jamie Fallon were the things he didn't mention. So he talked about the bikes that they were on, he talked about the electric bikes, he did not mention the support vehicles that they had. With the two electric Rivians that went along with them, the two Mercedes Sprinter vans that they had, the one Ford F350 pickup that was included, and likely the DC fast chargers that they had included in their, their gear as well. Now that is a ton of support gear to be able to run these bikes. Word out there is they also had two additional bikes that they were utilizing and maybe they'd swap out when the first one lost their charge. Now that makes the distances that they traveled in the timeline that they did maybe a little bit more understandable. But it wasn't mentioned during the course of the interview. And the thing that really scares me is that I want to believe in these guys. I want to believe that they're all about the adventure and this is about the trip and, and seeing if they could do this on electric bikes and that they held true to the idea that if they ran out of charge, that's the end of their day and they would just stop. And these deep chargers or the DC chargers and, and any sort of that support stuff was utilized just in emergency circumstances or not at all. Now I know I've heard from a lot of you out there that I'm, I'm completely naive about this and this is all about the money from, from Harley Davidson. This is all about uh, just pushing an agenda and the video does seem a little bit like that might be part of what it is, but I still hold out hope. These are the guys that introduced me to adventure motorcycling. These are the guys that, that got me interested in here. I honestly don't know that I would be on a bike today if it wasn't for the Long Way Round series. And I want to believe that, that they kept true to that, that tradition. Um, but this video is really making me kind of second guess myself. So now with the DC chargers, it seems as though you can actually, within 40 minutes, get about 80% of your charge back and with a full hour, completely charge up those bikes. So that is a way that obviously you could have some lunch and get a full bike at the, at the opposite end of that. Uh, and it, I, 
it seems like that's the only way that this trip is really even possible is if they're using those generators, if they're using those DC chargers to be able to push those bikes further than they could go before. Again, if you check out the Harley Davidson site, it looks like the recommended or expected distance that these bikes are traveling, the live wires, is anywhere between 146 and about 95 miles on a single charge. Now, that's not a whole lot of distance. For anybody who's done traveling long distance, you know that you're pushing probably closer to four to 600 miles a day if you can. So getting 150 miles out of your bike during the course of the day is not gonna be enough to make that trip accessible, especially in the three month, four month time period that they did it in. If you look at the charging stations that are available in the States, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 29,000 charging stations in the States with 43,000 charging units available to you. Now, if you take that down into South America, you get just a handful, less than 50 total charging stations in all of South America. And obviously that's not uh, accounted for for every one, but that's a website that specifically is aggregating all of these numbers to try and make sure that you can get those charging stations. So I'm sure they're doing a reasonably good job or at least coming close, but that's a huge disparity between 30,000 and 50. And that makes you wonder, how are they getting these quick charges on these bikes if it isn't with the attached gear that they're taking along with them? So I want to believe in these guys, but just imagine, it's like, it's like having your sports heroes from youth, your Sammy Sosa's and your Jose's Canseco's end up being steroid. Wow. Well, it's like, imagine Lance Armstrong was actually, you know, take, shoot. Ah. Imagine, imagine all of your political leaders ended up being liars and cheaters and... Oh. Oh. Maybe they didn't actually do it. Maybe this is all for the money. Maybe this is all for the agenda. I, I just don't want to believe that. I cannot wait to see the show, but I'll tell you, this whole electric bike thing is really throwing this into a bit of a stir. I hate to see that they, they might be challenging their legacy as, as riders. Imagine if Ted Simon came forward and you found out that 50% of the trip that he did around the world, uh, he took a, a luxury bus, like a, an RV, and just loaded the bike in the back. It's, it's that level of disappointment in, in what these guys are potentially doing here. And, and I don't wanna believe that's what's going on, but the show should be forthcoming. Now the last thing that's really interesting, and Sabrina brought it up in the course of the article, but ever since they, they hit their destination in December, there's been almost a complete blackout for any sort of information. And with the day of social media and, and the ability to get to all of your fans immediately, I'm a little confused as to why they're not putting out updates more often and, and showing still images from some of the best places that they went to or little snippets of video to kind of get everybody's juices going when it comes to this this thing, or, or putting out a release date at this point. We have nothing. It's, it's as though they've gone completely black on this and, and we have no idea when any, any new information is gonna come forward. They're not even doing interviews or discussions about it at this point, which makes me wonder, is there something wrong? Is, did it not work out as well as they thought? Uh, in the video, if you, if you watch, Ewan talks a little bit about uh, running out of a charge and having to get towed to different places, which I imagine is not a look that Harley Davidson wants put out there. Um, apparently, Charlie is either a better rider or just conserves energy better because he never, he never ran out of charge. But, but why are we not hearing more? At, at this point, we should at least have a release date. We should at least know when, when we can expect to see this show going. And it's possible that they did the whole thing on spec, so they're just waiting for somebody to, to pick it up for distribution, but let us know. We got a lot of anxious people here that are interested in this. Oh, why? What are you talking about? That's what I've got for your update right now. I'm gonna include the link to Sabrina's article below this so you can see the videos, so you can see what she wrote. She did a really, really good job of going through everything and, and much more succinctly than I did. Uh, but I wanted to get the information out to you just in case you didn't have a chance to see that article. You can, you can see the link below. Tell me what you think in the comments. Let me know if you plan on tuning in. Let me know if you think that this is all just a scam to get Harley Davidson's name out there. Let me know if you think these guys are frauds or, or posers at this point, or if they were even at the beginning. I mean, I know there was a lot of pushback against even their first trip with support vehicles and, and around the world had been done with 
with much simpler means prior to them. Why are they going with these, these extraordinarily kitted out bikes? But let me know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna continue updating because regardless of whether or not these guys are, are potentially maybe frauds, I'm still interested. I wanna see it. I wanna know what, the, what this trip was like. It's a trip I'm interested in taking, not on an electric bike, but I would love to make that trip down to Tierra del Fuego. So I'm gonna be tuning in. Let me know what you're gonna be doing as well. This is Be Gone For Good. I'm completely out of breath. I'm, I'm dying here. I'm just so excited to see what's gonna be happening. And every little bit of leaked information is just pushing me right over the edge. So if you're the same way, again, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel. I will be putting out anything that I hear, anything that uh, is new that comes up, any articles that I read, I'll let you know about it so you can get your information here if you can't get it anywhere else. So thanks for watching. Nah, I gotta get out of here.